three videos on a simple timer application? Sure thing. Um, we're going to take it a step further. So far, we've created a pretty nice little timer script um, that displays uh, properly formatted with placeholder zeros, a timer that starts when you start the script, gives you a fairly accurate time using the current uh, time on uh, your, your computer's uh, time chip. Uh, rather than just using a loop, which can definitely get out of sync pretty fast. Uh, we're formatting it with leader zeros. We're clearing the line rather than the whole screen, which is nice in many cases. Um, but uh, there's one drawback to our code is if we accidentally close this window or kill our script, we start it again, it starts all over again. Can we make it so that uh, whenever we, if we start the timer, even if we kill it, can we, if we start it again, get an accurate time since the original time started? What if we were to shut off our computer and wait three months, a year, come back, turn it back on? Will it give us an accurate time from when we started the timer? Of course we can do that. So let's go ahead and go into our code here. Uh, the only thing that's different here is I added this little um, header here with the GPL uh, and copyright information. Um, but what we need to do is create a temporary file that we're going to put this start time in and then we can check if that file exists. If that file exists, get the start time from that. If not, get the current start time or if we tell it to start over again. Uh, so let's go ahead. We could put that information into our temp folder, which would be a nice place for it. But if we were to restart our computer or shut down, we're going to lose that. So uh, we could use the user's home directory would be the next best bet. So we're just going to take uh, to create a variable called temp and we're going to say dollar sign home forward slash and I'll just call it uh, dot the dot makes it a hidden file so dot uh, my timer dot temp how about that now what we can do we can say if this file exists so we're going to say dash f which means if this file exists and we're going to give it dollar sign temp then else end the script okay oops Okay, so what I'm going to do here is if it exists, well then we're going to take this, let's put this in here, and we'll say let timer equal, and let's copy this again and paste it here because that's what we're going to use there. So if the file exists, oops, I can't type today, we'll cat the contents of that file out into timer. So if it exists, we're going to get it. If it doesn't exist, so our else, we're going to get the current time. And then we'll also want to put that start time into our temp file. So at this point, it will exist. And that's a start. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. So I might mess up a little bit. Okay, it printed that out, and let's kill it and start it again. No, nope, it's why is it cat? That should be going into that variable there. Wait, start. Oh, I have <laughs> quotations. Quotations need to go in the right spot. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Now, okay. And if we kill it and we run it again, oh, look at that, it started at five seconds. If we kill it, let's wait a couple of seconds, start it again, we're at 10 seconds. Kill it, we'll go three, four, five, run it again. We're at 15 seconds now. So that's good so far. So now what we need to create is for the user to restart the timer if they want. So let's go back in here uh, and let's add in a little bit of output here. I'm going to say, whoops. Echo new timer started. And really, we should be putting all this in a function since we're working with functions. And here we'll say echo timer reloaded. Okay. And yes, let's do this. Let's go uh, 9 dd. I'll come down here, paste, and I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call 
um, function check timer <laughs> that we indent everything uh, save that up here we're going to go check timer check Oop. there we go let's go ahead and uh, I put the semicolon there at the end you can have it or you don't need it I'm just uh, I write a lot of other programming languages that require it so I get in the habit of it sometimes uh, there we go timer reloaded uh, and if we were to delete that file, we'll say remove uh, from our home directory dot my timer and we restart our script. New timer started. If we kill it and restart it, timer reloaded. Okay. So now all I have to do is so that the user doesn't have to manually delete it like I just did. Uh, we're going to go in here and we're going to check here if dollar sign one, which is the first argument given to our command, um, and we're going to say equals, here we'll say new, oops, I'll tell you I can't type today, new, then, oops, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove dollar sign temp. So, if I'm correct, we're gonna go like this. The timer is reloaded. So welcome to my timer, timer reloaded. And it's been a minute since I originally started this timer. If I kill it and start it again, it does the same, it continues again. But if I say new, it started a new timer. Perfect. And again, as long as that file isn't deleted, you could shut down your computer, turn it back on, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years later, and it should give you an accurate time. Obviously, if you come back years later, your your days is going to be a big number. We didn't put a, 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 a column there for months or years, so this last little column here will be a pretty big number if you wait three years, you know? Um, but let's go ahead and go back in our code and look it over real quick. The only thing that we could probably do is give user um, output uh, on how to reset the timer. Uh, so here, instead of just reloaded, we can say reloaded. And we could create a whole help function uh, where you do dash H and it loads stuff to the screen. But let's just right here say um, I'm just thinking whether I want to make a whole help menu. Now, let us say to restart run dollar sign zero new uh, dollar sign zero is going to be the name of our script so it's wherever our script is or whatever it's named so right now our script's called timer.sh if we were to rename that this dollar sign zero will automatically see that and put it there um, and I guess I should put it like this so let's go ahead and run it without the new command and it's going to say welcome to my timer Timer reloaded to rest to rerun to restart. Oh yeah, to restart run dot slash timer new. And of course, if this was put into uh, you know a folder like my user bin folder, uh, user local bin, uh, it would uh, you don't have to do the dot slash, and this will reflect that. So again, if I run it again, it's been two minutes since last time I restarted it. If I kill it, I can do. Uh, dot slash timer new and start a new timer and that's it that's about what I wanted to do with this timer so uh, I'm happy with this uh, everything's clear I'm gonna put a new line there just break things up so again let's just look over it we, we have our main function which isn't run here it's run at the end because you want the whole script to, to load for JavaScript. Uh, same with like uh, C programming, you, you need the whole code. If you're gonna call a function, you can't call that function until it's hit in the script. So I can't call the main function until it's been declared. And then inside the main function, I can't call uh, check timer or start timer until they've been loaded. So that's why we call main down at the bottom. Uh, that's not uncommon for uh, many programming languages, not all. All depends on how the programming language is set up. So again, it loads. Let's go just from the top. 
we have our temp file here and then we're going to check did the user say uh, they wanted a new timer well if so remove our temp file uh, and actually at that point if that file doesn't exist we're probably going to get uh, error output there uh, so for example let's let's have a look at that let's go ahead and remove that file and run our script and you can see we did get an error which is not a problem but it's kind of ugly uh, so we should be able to rectify that we could check if the file exists before we try to remove it uh, but we could also just say um, actually that's probably the best way to go about doing it so so uh, well real quick if we just wanted to, to put it to null we should be able to do two greater than uh, dev forward slash null and now we should not get even if we remove that file so no error there. Um, oh, let's try. Let's just make sure we do it without the new. Uh, yeah, no error there. The error is happening. We're not seeing it. Uh, so, but another option would be. And it doesn't hurt to have that there anyway. Uh, but what we really want to do a proper way would probably be to check if that file exists before we try to remove it. So we should be able to check uh, if the user says new. And we can put an if statement inside the if statement, but we should also be able to, in this case, uh, do dash f dollar sign temp. I like to put things in quotations. And it's very important with bash to have these spaces that, you know, right there, there's a space, there's a space. If you don't put these spaces, you're going to get an error. So if you're getting an error, that's, that's why, or it might be why. Um, uh, but I think that will work. Let's just... First of all, I'll remove that, uh, run our timer script. We didn't see an error. Let me go ahead just to see. I'm going to comment this out. Let's go ahead and remove that, run this. Yeah, no error because the file didn't exist. Uh, but it doesn't hurt uh, to leave that in there, the dev null. It's irrelevant because, well, it might be good to remove it in case for some reason the user doesn't have permission to remove that file they'll see the error there which might be a good thing so we might not want this here it's up to you as a programmer uh, I'm just trying to think of you know if their user for some reason the permissions got messed up in their home directory and they can't delete that file our timer program is not going to work and they're not going to know why because they're not getting an error if we put it to dev null so let's not have that in there anyway there's we started uh, reloaded it and new again uh, this code I'm going to post on pastebin if you go to filmsbychris.com that's Chris of the K there's a link in the description right here uh, you can go to software and then down here we have software uh, scripts I think last time I said my scripts was actually the name oh I'm sorry not scripts notes I said it wrong in the last video. Notes will bring you to my scripts. You can see right here it says. And then here I can start searching for stuff. Uh, and in this case, uh, I could type in bash uh, basic timer. And it would come up, except for my list updates once a day. And I just uh, uploaded the last one. I haven't uploaded this one yet, so they're not showing up in the list. But it searches through all my paste bin. Uh, files, which I have 623 entries in there. This is a great place if you're just bored and want to try some things out. You can type in Bash or Python, and you can see code. And, and it's a uh, fairly somewhat smart. It might run a little slow on mobile devices because it's not the best design. Because I actually have it load not only a list; it's searching through every word in the scripts, and it actually loads right now in the background of this page. Every single script is loading. <laughs> the entire the entire script so if I have a script that's five pages long it's in this page already so it takes a little time to filter on slower devices and that's just how I designed it instead of filtering it on the server end, which is how it should be done I'm filtering it uh, on the client end and uh, there's so there's hundreds of pages of scripts loading when this loads anyway uh, that's a great place to look through my scripts Bigger projects I have up on, oh, it says GitHub. I need to replace that because I've actually started using GitLab. My GitHub's still there, but I'm not updating it anymore. Get GitLib, GitLab. Uh, so I didn't realize I forgot to update the link on my homepage. There we go. That's me, see, with a crown rather than a silly little mustache. So I do thank you for watching. 
Uh, I know, I hope that I took something as basic as creating a timer and complicated it beyond belief for you. Uh, but that's, that's uh, I find, a lot of programming. You can write a script that does pretty much anything you want pretty simply, pretty easily, and pretty fast. But then when you start thinking about how people are going to use it uh, and thinking about mistakes the end user might make or extra functionality or more cleanly doing it, uh, you can spend a lot of time on a basic thing such as a stopwatch application. Um, so part of this three-part tutorial was to show that. It's very easy to to go down that, that uh, rabbit hole. Uh, but that's part of being a, a good programmer. Uh, if you're writing a script for yourself, it's usually pretty simple. But once you start writing it and thinking of end users who may not be thinking like you think, uh, it can get a little more complicated. Or if you just want to add more functionality to it. And sometimes you also overthink it where you start making it too um, too complex. So keep your code short and simple. And uh, thank you for watching. Again, visit my website, filmsbychris.com. Lots of information there. Lots of videos to search through. And uh, that's it. Have a great day.